Good Wednesday morning, friends. I'm Pastor Ben Hayes from First Baptist Church, Dadeville, Alabama, bringing you our thought for the day. And I hope that you're having a great Wednesday so far. And uh, as you join us today, uh, keep in mind we have our men's Bible study at 10 a.m. where we're continuing uh, our journey through First Thessalonians. But also tonight, 5 o'clock, our family night supper. It's going to be good. It always is. And then at 6, we have prayer meeting and Bible study. Uh, also, we have our adventure clubs for young families, and then we have choir practice at 7 o'clock, and we have a great choir, so come and be a part of that. If you have your Bibles today, pick up with me in Colossians chapter 4, the end of the, the chapter, it's the end of the letter, and a lot of times we skip over this because it's a lot of greetings and, you know, tell this person hello and make sure this is done and these kinds of things, and it, it seems kind of technical, and, and a lot of times we, we just skim right over it. And when we do, we miss some things. So let's look at this. Starting in verse 7, Paul says, Tychicus, a beloved brother, faithful minister, and fellow servant in the Lord. Wouldn't you like to, to know that uh, you were going to go down in history uh, in the Word of God uh, where millions upon millions of people would read this and be called a beloved brother, faithful minister, and fellow servant in the Lord? Well, that's what Paul does because even though he's the one that gets all the credit, he's the one that's the great missionary, and I don't mean to discredit him in any way, he has others that are working with him. He has those that have come alongside him in a special way to help him. And that tells me that every minister of God needs those kinds of people to come alongside, to kind of to lift the hands like Aaron and Hur did for Moses to just take care of uh, things that, that we can't take care of on our own. And so Tychicus is, is one of those guys. And he says, I'm sending him to you. He's going to tell you all the news about me. Now, he wanted the people at Colossae and Laodicea. We see this is going to be read there as well. He wants them to know what's going on in his life. Why is that? So that they can pray for him, so that they can support him financially because he needs that. Uh, if he's going to continue sharing the gospel, so that they can be a part of the ministry that he's doing. So he wants them to know, but he says, I'm sending him to you for this very purpose, that he may know your circumstances and comfort your hearts. See, Paul wasn't the only one ministering to these folks. Those that were working with Paul would also come, and they would find out what's going on, take that news back to Paul so he could pray and write letters, but also they would minister to them, teach them uh, truths that they had learned, help them to make it through the difficult circumstances, encourage them to continue to persevere. And he says, but I'm sending with him Onesimus, a faithful and beloved brother who is one of you from Colossae. He was one of their members who had come to Paul and Paul had, had mentored him, discipled him, and now he was coming back. And he says, they will make known to you all things which are happening here. And the glorious truth that the gospel was being spread, even though Paul was in chains uh, in Rome, they would find out all of the, the good things that God was doing. He continues, Aristarchus, my fellow prisoner, greets you with Mark, the cousin of Barnabas, about whom you received instructions. If he comes to you, welcome him. So understand, Paul is, is giving this list of people who are going to, to be uh, going to the Colossians and helping them, but those who are staying behind and ministering with him there while he was in prison. And he, he goes on, he says, And Jesus, who is called Justice, these are my only fellow workers for the kingdom of God who are of the circumcision. They have proved to be a comfort to me. In other words, these were the only Jewish converts who had stuck with him that had stayed there in Rome to help him. Now, there were others, there were Gentiles who had come into the faith who were part of uh, the work of the ministry, but these were the only uh, Jewish believers that had stuck with Paul to help him through these difficult circumstances. And others, Epaphras, who is one of you from Colossae, a bondservant of Christ, greets you always, laboring fervently for you in prayers, that you may stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. See, exactly what Paul tells us to do as we pray for him and for others, he says, Epaphras is doing for you. He says, For I bear him witness that he has a great zeal for you, and those who are in Laodicea, and those in Herapolis, 
Luke, the beloved physician, and Demas greet you. Greet the brethren who are in Laodicea and Nymphus in the church that is in his house. A lot of truths that are here. But the basic truth is that we are all part of a team working together. Some here, some there. Some staying, some going. But the point is to strengthen the church, to disciple believers, to encourage and equip them to go into the world and continue the process of making disciples. Have you heard that before? It seems to be a recurring theme, doesn't it? But that's because it's what Jesus told us to do. Go into the world and make disciples. I hope you have a great day today. Be blessed, and I'll see you back here tomorrow.